Hello and welcome to our Year 9 Options Information Presentation. My name is Gary Rogers and I'm Associate Head Teacher here at Coombe Boys School. During the course of this presentation, I will briefly be outlining the Key Stage 4 curriculum and taking you and your sons through the school's options process. The curriculum in Year 10 and Year 11 is carefully planned, well designed and well sequenced. We are extremely ambitious for all of our students and our curriculum matches that ambition. It is broad and balanced in nature and is truly accessible to all students. Over the course of year 10 and 11, your son will study a range of compulsory subjects which will prepare them effectively for their next steps in education, training or employment. And there will also be some optional subjects that your son can choose from. GCSEs are now graded, graded on a one to nine scale, with nine being the top end of this scale. Over the last few years, there has been some reforms to the GCSEs that have made them more academically rigorous, with additional, more challenging content being added to the courses, with some of this content being dropped down from A-level. There's an increased focus on spelling, punctuation and grammar, and also an increased focus on extended writing and literacy. GCSEs now culminate in an exam at the end of year 11, which is classed as a linear examination. These examinations for most courses are 100% assessed through this exam at the end of year 11. The grading structure as can be seen in this graphic with the new grading structure on the left hand side and the old grading structure of the A star to G on the right, you can clearly see that grade four is now the standard pass at GCSE and a grade five is now classed as a good pass. And the grade five was sit between the old B and C grade. In maths and English, the benchmark of a grade four is very important, as if this is not achieved, then students will have to continue to study these subjects and resit them again and sit exams in them again during the course of the sixth form. As I said, we are extremely ambitious for all of our students and cater for every student's needs. As a result of that, we offer a range of BTEC courses for students to choose as part of their options subject choices. These provide experiences and apply the learning and skills learnt within lessons to a more work-based context. They are assessed mainly through assignments which are completed in school with an external examination at the end of year 11 that's a much smaller percentage than the 100% linear exams you have in GCSEs. And these qualifications are awarded as a pass, merit, distinction and distinction star which are equivalent to GCSEs. So your son will study a number of compulsory subjects and these are English language, English literature, mathematics, the separate sciences of biology, chemistry, physics or combined science. Mr Jameson, assistant head teacher and head of science has put together a short video outlining how they will guide your son through these option choices in science and guide them to the right course for them. Your son will also study a modern foreign language, either French, German or Spanish and they then choose a humanities subject of geography or history. They will also have lessons in PE each week, but these are non-examined. There's also a range of option subjects for them to choose from. And as I've said, there we have a number of BTEC courses available to students, and these are in business studies, media studies, sports studies, and digital information technology. The vast majority of students will be asked to choose two option subjects alongside some reserves. Mrs Ahmed, Mr Patel and Mr Jameson have put together some short presentations on our core subjects um, so please do go and have a look at those when you've finished watching this presentation. They just outline in a little bit more detail the content and assessment processes for each of those subjects of English, Maths and Science. It's really important at this stage when your son is choosing his courses for key stage four, that he also looks a little bit beyond, beyond that and tries to think ahead. It's really important that he considers what he enjoys doing and what subjects he enjoys. It's also worth considering what he might want to study in the sixth form. And it's okay for them not to know at the age of 13 or 14 exactly what they do want to be or what they do want to study. So looking at what they enjoy doing is really, really important. If they do know what they want to study in the sixth form, 
then it's where possible we suggest it's important that they study a subject at GCSE level if they did want to go on to take that subject at level 3 as an A level or a BTEC. And at Coombe we find it very very important to ensure that students develop strong study habits, creating independent learners, making sure they have good literacy skills and those extended writing skills that we talked about earlier. So looking ahead slightly um, for a few moments towards the Coombe 6 form. The results of Coombe 6 form are excellent. Almost a third of all entries are graded A star to A and almost 80% of all entries are graded at A star to C. The 6 form is very popular and offers a range of A level and B tech courses at level 3. It's possible also for students to combine some A level courses with a B tech qualification. And the minimum entry requirements for the Coombe 6 form are five GCSEs graded at, graded at nine to four. So it is important to just think ahead slightly to what comes after Key Stage 4 when making your option choices. So as we said, consider what your son enjoys doing. It really is the important part of the thinking process. Are there any six form plans that they're aware of? If not, discuss this with them. Have an opportunity to have that conversation and think ahead as to what they enjoy and what they may want to do as they move through the school sixth form and into university in the world of work. It's very, very important that the choices are independent choices, choices they made themselves, but also informed choices, and they're not teacher and friend driven. And it's also very important just consider what assessment procedures suits your son's style of learning and your son better, whether that's 100% linear GCSE exams, or whether some BTEC courses where they are more assignment based may work best for your son. So what might a timetable look like at key stage four? This is an example that I've put together. So the compulsory subjects of English language and English literature, maths, the science, either combined or separate, and I said before, that's guided by um, your science teachers. This person has chosen the humanities subjects of history and they've been studying Spanish during the course of Key Stage 3, so have chosen Spanish as their language. Many of you may have heard of something called an English Baccalaureate Award. And this is a broad academic qualification that's strongly recommended at Coombe and these subjects would qualify your son for this English Baccalaureate. Many universities consider this essential to be studying at a degree level and it also helps provide greater opportunities for your son in further education and it keeps their options open for further study and also for further careers and it's something that we strongly recommend here at Coombe. There are also two option choices available to your son for the vast majority of students and this person has chosen computer science and music. Where possible we always try to ensure that students have their first choice combination of subjects. However, where this is not possible, it is very important that we have reserve choices that your son has had a careful think about and chosen carefully. And these must be subjects that he would be willing to take at GCSE level. And these reserve option choices, this person has chosen geography and also a BTEC in sports studies. So this is what somebody's timetable could look like when they start year 10. Alongside that, they also have the core PE lessons every week as well. So the options process has already begun and last week and this week, there's been a range of education information and guidance that's been going on via the tutors in tutor time and also during the course of this week in the subjects where subject teachers have informed students about the content of the GCSE subjects and the assessment procedures and processes within each of those subjects. They've also then related those to how that can impact and look forward to them as they move into the Coombe 6 form. There's also been assemblies for new subjects in media studies and business studies, which aren't studied at key stage three. This presentation is part of this virtual event um, going on um, during the course of the options process and will be available on the website for you to um, go back to if you wish to. Uh, the options booklet will be issued tomorrow morning uh, on Thursday the 11th um, and will be emailed to you and your son 
and the online options forms that we use will go live from tomorrow morning. On the 3rd of March, we have a Year 9 Parent Progress Evening, uh, which starts at 4 p.m. And that's an opportunity for you and your son to talk through the GCSEs and the subjects that they may wish to take as they progress into Year 10, and also to look at the progress that they've been making in those subjects during the course of this year. And the deadline for those option form submissions is the 12th of March. We use a package called Sims Options Online, um, which means that all of the options are um, submitted via an online platform. And the link to these to this Sims Online will be sent to your son's email address on Thursday 11th of February. We recommend that it's completed after the parents' evening um, on the 3rd of March to really give your son and you an opportunity to discuss their next steps, to discuss the courses with their subject teachers and make those informed choices that are very, very important. As I said, we will try to accommodate virtually all of our students choice combinations and we've managed to do that in the past. But it's really important that your son identifies some reserve choices in case the first choice option is not available. And it's important they are happy to study these at um, year 10 and 11 if we are unable to accommodate their first choice option subjects. Once the deadline has been met, we will email parents to confirm the choices um, that have been entered on the form. And after Easter, we'll be unable to guarantee any changes to those course choices. So it's really important that your son thinks carefully about the choices that they are going to make. There is a parent guide which is linked to these slides, which is available on the website and the actual um, presentation for selecting your Nine Options Choices Sims Online form guide is also on the website. And that's a step-by-step -step guide that talks you and your son through how to complete the Sims Online option form. If there is any further advice and support that your son or you would like regarding this, there are a range of um, avenues which we've talked about with the parents' evening um, coming up for you to discuss with your son's subject teachers. Your tutors, son's tutors are also uh, well aware of the subject uh, availability and the options process. So please do um, get your son to speak to them in more detail if they have any questions or queries. And obviously your subject teachers in their lessons as well have been going through that during the course of this week. Mrs England as the head of year nine and Mrs Vaughan as the assistant head teacher will also be available and able to assist if you have any questions and require additional advice and support and guidance. And Mrs King as a SENCO is available if there is any SEN questions or queries regarding the options process.